Hello friends, welcome to another wonderful edition of Power in the World Service coming from Glory Impact Business Center. Once again, I'm Sola Folaya with me. We have the president of our ministry, Reverend Dr. Bisa Folaya. We started a very powerful series yesterday. I tell you, it was an eye-opener, have a new dimension to faith completely. You know, yesterday we learned that faith is not just having God's quality or God's kind of faith, but we have to have faith in God. And that we also have the responsibility to build our own faith. If we're going to, you know, have access to the kingdom blessing and all the benefits of the kingdom. Tonight, we're going to have well, a continuation of the teaching that started yesterday. Welcome with me, Reverend Dr. Bissafalayo, as we go on. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We give thanks to the Almighty God for great things he has done. And we want to bless the name of the Lord for what the Lord uh, started to do yesterday uh, on the subject of faith. Today, we will continue on that same teaching on faith. And um, we were trying to look at um, building a foundation yesterday for the subject of faith. And we were looking at three things we wanted to discuss on. But yesterday, we were able to discuss two. But before I go to the third one today, I will be uh, going over what we discussed yesterday. Yesterday, we started by looking into scriptures. And we found out that um, the subject of faith is so important in the Bible. Four times in the Bible, Bible declares that the just shall live by faith. We saw that from Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, Romans chapter 1, verse 17. We saw that from Galatians 3, 11, and from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, the just shall live by faith. And we began to look at the importance of faith in our introduction, and then we moved on to number one point that we talked about, number one item, that you have to have faith in God. If you want to see uh, the power of God at work, faith will always be needed. Hallelujah. Amen. And then we look at the second item, which is it has to be your faith. Your faith is very important. We saw that faith is the foundation of our work with God. So if you want to see uh, the power of God at work in your life, then you will need to walk by faith. So it has to be your faith and that uh, building and developing your faith is your own responsibility. It's your responsibility to build and to develop your faith. Now, we move to the third item today, and this is what we'll be discussing on in the next 20 minutes or so we'll be looking at the word protect the number the number three item protect your faith protect your faith number one item have faith in god number two item it has to be your faith number three item protect your faith now because faith is personal and it is your faith that we are talking about here as the faith that is necessary to obtaining the victory, then you need to protect that faith because there is an adversary that will want to rob you of that faith. There is an adversary that will want you not to be able to release your faith. Now, we will look at a typical example in scriptures. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 22. Gospel of Luke chapter 22 verse 31 and 32. This was Jesus speaking to Peter. And let's see uh, what Jesus said to Peter. That will be read for us. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith 
fail not, and where thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus told Peter here, he said, Simon, uh, Satan have desired. Mm -hmm. One translation says he has taken permission, mm -hmm. you know, to, to get you and to sift you as wheat. Mm -hmm. To sift wheat means, you know, the way you take the shaft from the real sea. Mm -hmm. Now, he said, Satan has gotten permission mm -hmm. to get you, to sift you as, as wheat. Now, Peter was a good disciple of Jesus. Peter loved Jesus. Jesus loved Peter. And you know, when I first saw this scripture many years back, I, I tried to sort of put myself in the position of Jesus. And I felt, if I have uh, an advanced information that Satan wanted to uh, sift one of my disciples like Peter, I was going to go all out against Satan. I was going to ask the devil, no, you cannot touch Peter. Mm -hmm. Peter is my good disciple. In fact, he is the one, you know, that was with Jesus Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration. And he was a very important figure in the earthly ministry of Jesus. And I was going to say that I will tell Satan, no, you cannot touch Peter. Mm -hmm. Never. Take your hands off him. But I was amazed that when I read the second part of that verse, mm. Jesus did not say that I have prayed for you so that Satan don't touch you. you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, but what did he say? He said, but I have prayed for you. But what was the prayer he prayed? Mm. That your faith fail. does not fail. Mm. I, I, in the Bible, in basic English translation. That verse 32 says, but I have made prayer for you that your faith may not go from you. That your faith may not go from you. So the prayer of Jesus was not that the enemy will not still bring the attack. The prayer of Jesus was for the faith of Peter. Mm -hmm. I have prayed for you that your faith will still be intact. Your faith will still be intact. And I want to say this to you, church, for anyone listening to me, wherever you may be, upon the globe today, your faith needs to be intact. Hallelujah. Your faith. Hallelujah. Your faith. Hallelujah. So, in other words, it is not what really the enemy is throwing at a believer that matters. If your faith is intact, if your faith does not go away from you, the enemy will surely lose the battle. Hallelujah. Glory be to If the enemy throws any challenge at a believer and his faith is intact, he will surely win. So, the focus of the prayer of Jesus for Peter was not for the enemy not to come. The focus mm. was that his faith will remain. Mm. His faith will remain. Now, in other words, you know, if we look at it from another way, what does that really sort of translate to? It therefore means that the trials, the troubles, mm. the challenges that we go through are targeted at our faith. Mm. So when the enemy throws fiery darts, when the enemy raises up his ugly head, what is the devil targeting? Your faith. Because from what Jesus told Peter here, if your faith is intact, you will surely win. You will surely win. So today, for example, we have the pandemic going on in the world. And the fear of the pandemic is there. Mm. Now, what is the devil targeting? Your faith. The faith of believers. Mm. 
He wants to rob you of your faith because he knows that the moment your faith is removed from you, the moment you lose faith, he has an upper hand. The moment you lose faith, he has an upper hand. So he will keep doing things to rob you of your faith, to make you lose faith, to make you throw your shield of faith away, to make you enter into doubt and unbelief. He will keep, you know, staring up. And you know, in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 3, the Bible says, and verse 4, it says, If our gospel be healed, it is healed to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them that believe not. So, Satan is regarded as the God of this world. In other words, he can manipulate events in the physical world. Mm. And what is the purpose mm. of his manipulating events in the physical world? The purpose is your faith. To rob you of your faith. So why does he create fear? To rob you of your faith. Why does he stir up all the rumors? To rob you of your faith. Because that is the purpose. If he can rob you of your faith, he will have the upper hand. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So Jesus Christ said to Peter, I have prayed for you. I have prayed for you. My concern, Peter, is not what the devil is bringing. It's not what the devil is doing. My concern is your faith. Uh, and so, you know... Um when Apostle Paul was talking about the armor of the believer, yeah, you know, he said we should, you know, put our shield, the of, shield faith of faith, yeah, that we can counteract the fiery darts. Yeah, we'll quench, quench all the fiery, all the fiery darts, darts of the enemy. So the enemy would certainly feel throw his darts, yeah, but our shield of faith has to be intact. Exactly. Right. And and that's one thing. The devil wants you to throw away that shield, that shield of faith. faith. Hallelujah. He wants you to throw away that shield of faith. Mm. Now, so today... So it's actually a defense. It's a, it's a defense. Now, look at it. Look at the world today. Look at all the mm. troubles that is going on. All the challenges that is going on. From God's perspective, when he looks at the believer, what is he focusing on, on the believer? Mm. Is he focusing at what is happening what around is happening you? Around. No. He is focusing at what is going on inside of you. Inside. Wow. Wow. Because faith is a spiritual force. Mm. Now, so the fear is there. Mm. You know, the uncertainty is there. Businesses have been affected. Economies of nations are going into recession. All these things are there. But from God's perspective, when he looks at a believer... What is he looking for? The state of your faith. Hallelujah. The state of your faith. Mm. So recession may come. And we need to understand that this will not be the first time that recession will come. Mm -hmm. The Bible says there is nothing new Only. under the heaven. In the time of Abraham, there was recession. In the time of Isaac, there was recession. In Genesis Chapter 12, we saw that in the time of Abraham. In the time of Isaac, Genesis 26, there was recession. In the time of Jacob and Joseph, there was recession, global recession. So it's not a new phenomenon. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. So when God looks at you as a believer, what is he looking for? He is looking at the state of your faith. Is your faith still intact? Yes, the recession reality may be there. The uncertainty may be there. People are going to lose their jobs. But what is the state of your faith? Is your faith still going to be intact? And that is why protecting your faith is very important. In the midst of all that is happening, 
What is God wanting you to do as a believer? Protect your faith. Protect your faith from contamination, mm. from pollution. Mm. Protect your faith. At this time, you know, things that can corrupt and pollute your faith, which as we go on, you know, daily in these studies, we're going to look at, you need to really, really watch out for them. Mm. At this time, you might need to refuse to hear some people. Mm. Because some people are there to just take your faith out. Mm. That, that's what they've come into your life for they come around you and they come to tell you to create fear mm. in your heart now i need to say this when we talk about creating fear i am not saying that we are not you know mindful of the realities that is on ground that is not what the scripture is saying because faith does not deny the realities on ground but faith right. believes that there is a supernatural, uh, 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 there is a supernatural intervention into the natural realities that can take place. Right. So what we are saying is this: when God comes and God looks at you and God looks at the situation, what is God looking for? The state of your faith. I want you to say with me: I will protect my faith. I will protect my faith. Yeah. Hallelujah. Faith, hallelujah. I will protect my faith. So, in spite of what the devil was bringing to, to Peter, all that Jesus was concerned was the faith of Peter. I prayed for you that your faith don't leave you. Mm. Your faith. That is what I am interested in. Mm. No wonder we saw yesterday, you know, um, we saw yesterday when Apostle Paul was writing to the church in Thessalonica, you know, in 1 Thessalonians chapter uh, 3, and then Second Thessalonians, I mean Second uh, Second Thessalonians, also chapter one. We read those two places yesterday. First Thessalonians three from verse five to seven, and Second Thessalonians one verse three. We saw in First Thessalonians three verse five to seven that he said, "We sent Timothy to you so that he can, you know, bring us report tidings of your faith." Yeah. And then we were comforted. In our, you know, in, in our affliction by the state of your faith. When Timothy came back and told us, you guys are still standing in faith, mm -hmm. then we are comforted. Mm -hmm. And then he said in chapter, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3, that it is not just that you are standing in faith, but that your faith is growing continually. Your faith is growing. And that is the joy. That is the joy. So what is the enemy trying to do at this time? He wants to rob the believer of his faith. Therefore, protect your faith. Protect your faith. When we meet again, I will be sharing with you how the steps you need to take to protect your faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, in Ephesians 6, where you quoted the other time, Pastor B, Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10, the Bible says, There are finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the old armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, so the Bible was admonishing believers there that we need to be strong in the Lord. Now, you need to be strong. Why do you have to be strong? Because there is an enemy that is coming against your faith. So this is not the time to chicken out. This is not the time to give up. Now, watch this. It said in verse 13, I mean verse 12, it said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the old armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins got about with truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation for the gospel of peace. Verse 16. And above all, above all, above all, 
taking the shield of faith. faith. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, I, I want to bring out two things from this passage that we have read. The number one is in verse 10 and in verse, um, verse 14. He said, be strong in the Lord. And then verse 13, I mean verse 14 begins by saying, stand therefore. That's very crucial. Stand. A lot of things happening right now we want you to shift your ground. Mm. Stand your ground. Hallelujah. Stand you your ground. Shift ground. Yeah. There are things you are believe God for. There are people who are doing projects and they believe God, you know, for people who are believing God for you know, some open doors, people who are believing God, you know, for some blessings in their lives, people are believing God for certain things. And when they look at what is happening around, there is a tendency for them to shift their ground. Because they look at it, oh, I have already planned that by this month and this time and this time, this is going to happen. Now we don't even know where the world is going. Maybe I should just abandon this and leave this for the moment, God says, no. He says, stand therefore. Hallelujah. You've got to maintain your stand. Hallelujah. The confessions of faith that you have been making before now, stand and continue to make them. Glory to God. Don't shift your ground. Don't shift your ground. Because that's what the enemy is looking for. Amen. Amen. Some people are believing God for jobs. And now they look at it with the recession that has taken place, that, that, that is affecting the nations of the world right now. <laughs> what is the hope for me? <laughs> God said, no, stand therefore. Yeah, because miracles can happen in the midst of recession. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> Hallelujah. Absolutely. Miracles can happen in the midst of recession. Doors can open in the midst of recession. Hallelujah. In the midst of chaos, God can turn things around. around. If you stand, therefore. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So don't give up. On the things mm. you've been believing God for mm. at this time. Mm. Don't say, well, I don't think it's possible anymore. I don't think it can happen anymore. Let me just forget about mm. it. No. It says, stand, stand therefore. therefore. You know, I, I, when you look at that statement, you know, stand therefore, somehow it, it seems to me that there is actually something to stand there for. Oh, <laughs> is there stand there's a there? reason why yeah, you, should stand. you should stand. There's a reason yeah. why you should stand. So when he says so stand, stand there for, there is something to stand there for. Hallelujah. <laughs> so when you are standing in faith, there is actually something to stand for. for. There is something to stand for. There is something to stand for. So do not think that you are standing for nothing. For nothing. There is something, something to stand to for. Stand for. There is something Hallelujah. to stand for. Because our God never fails. God never fails, yeah. Never fails. There is something to stand, to stand for. for. So there may be the crisis going on and the troubles going on. There is something to, to stand, stand for. for. So he said, and in verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you will be able to quench all the fiery yeah, darts of the enemy. Okay. Now you see, taking the shield of faith, that expression talks about an active uh, position. position. Active position. Yeah, not, passive not, not, passive not passive. Something you are consciously doing. doing. So in other words, if you are not consciously taking the shield of faith, before you know it, you might drop the shield of faith. Wow. Wow. You have to be conscious of it. Mm. And that's why when you wake up in the morning, you've got, you've got to check yourself. Am I still walking in faith? Am I still standing in faith? Am I still standing in faith? Right. So he said, above all, you know, taking, the taking, shield. 
taking, not took. Not, took. <laughs> not, even, you, take. not even take. Yeah, taking, taking is a continuous action. action. Taking the shield of faith. Taking the shield of faith. Taking active, actively participating in it. So faith is not something you had yesterday. Mm. It's something you are actively participating in. The shield of, of faith. faith. No, because that is what the devil wants you to draw. To draw. Because once you draw the shield of faith, he's having a field day. He's having a field day. He can throw the fiery darts. And there is no way for you to defend yourself. Defend yourself. And remember we saw in the case of Peter, mm. Jesus never prayed. That the fiery that should not be thrown at Peter. Mm -hmm. He only prayed that the, <laughs> the shield will be intact. The shield of faith will be intact. And that's why we read yesterday, 1 Peter 5 4, where the Bible made us to understand where God said to Peter, uh, God says in his word, I mean, 1 John chapter 5 verse 4, that um, ye are of God. I mean, uh, uh, if you are born of God, you have overcome the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even mm -hmm. our, our faith. faith. I'm going to read the last passage and then we pray today. I believe you have been blessed. First Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. First Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Ah, glory to God. It's been an exciting time. First Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. It says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Who resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Now, when you look at those two verses, it speaks volumes. Mm. We're talking about protecting your faith. And that what the enemy is going for is your faith. And now here, the Bible says you've got an adversary. Mm -hmm. Is looking for whom to devour. But the Bible said there is a way out. Mm. What is the way out? You have to resist him. How do you resist him? He said, in faith. faith. Can you now see why the enemy wants to take out your faith? Mm. Because that is the only shield you have to resist him. That's, That's the, the only weapon to resist him. You know, the New Living Translation of verse 9 says, it says, stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Now, not in the faith of your pastor for you. Not in the faith of your husband, your wife for you. No, your own faith. So, how do you handle all that the enemy is trying to do? He says, You've got to be strong in your faith. faith. Your faith. Wow. Not somebody else's faith for you. Which uh, is taking us back to what we learned yesterday. Yeah. That we have to build our faith. That yeah. it is our faith, our personal faith. It is your personal faith and it is your responsibility to build your personal faith. So he said, your faith is what you use to resist him. Mm. Now, you will see there... He didn't say that the enemy is like a roaring lion, but don't worry, walking about him to devour, but don't worry, um, you know, he won't get near you. No. Mm -hmm. He didn't say that. But what he says is that, yeah, that is the job of the devil. I, I, I remember some year, uh, many years back, you know, I, I was uh, praying for a, a classmate of mine, and she was healed. And then she said to me, she said, you know, um, the devil have told me this and that and that and that and that. And, you know, she told me some things that the devil told her to create fear. And I said to her, why are you worried about what the devil said? Mm. That is his job. Mm. His job is to create fear in you. Yeah. So if the devil have not said those things to you, then we have to find out what is wrong with him. <laughs> <laughs> And knowing that whatever the enemy said is nothing but a lie. A lie, because the Bible it's says he doesn't have the capacity to speak to the truth. To speak the truth, it's a right. lie. Now, so if the devil tells you you're going to die to create fear in you, you don't have to bring that. You know, some people see that as a compliment. You know, the devil came to me and the devil said. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, 
That is his job. His job is to tell you things are not going to work. His job is to tell you you're going to die. His job is to tell you you're going to fail. His job is to tell you you're not going to make it. That is his job. If he doesn't do his job, then we need to find out something has gone wrong somewhere. Mm. So he goes about as a roaring lion, looking for whom to devour. That's why he said, be vigilant. Be vigilant in protecting your faith. That's why protecting your faith is an active thing. It's something you are participating on. You know, and that's why from time to time you confess the word, from time to time you, you praise God, you pray in the spirit, because these are things that you need to do actively to be sure you are walking in faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. So he said, be vigilant. Because be sober. Why? The enemy is roaring, he's going around. He's going around looking for whom to devour, going around looking for what to do. Hallelujah. It's looking for who to destroy. But let your faith be instant. Now, in our conclusion today, we started yesterday by looking at the foundation of faith. And we have said faith is the foundation for our walk with God. And we have said that you have to have faith in God. We have said that it has to be your faith. And number three, we have said you have to protect your faith. It's your responsibility to be sure you are still in faith. It's your responsibility. By the grace of God, when we come tomorrow, I will begin to, uh, by the grace of God, define what faith really is. Mm. And what faith is not. And what faith is not. Because a lot of times, we assume to know what is faith. So before you can grow your faith, before you can defend your faith, before you can have faith, you need to know what is faith. From my experience, I found out that many people talk about faith. Mm. They know about faith. They know what faith can do if you have faith. But when you ask them what is faith, they don't really know it. Mm. And how do you walk in faith if you don't know whether you even have faith or not. If you don't know what faith is and what faith is not. So stay tuned with us tomorrow, 6 p.m. on the dot, by the grace of God. We'll be broadcasting live, 6 p.m. West African time, right? GMT plus one. We'll be broadcasting live, 30 minutes teaching on the foundation of faith. I believe you have been blessed tonight watching us please circulate these videos and the one of yesterday bless your friends your families your household at this lockdown lockdown season and let them all begin to grow their faith Pastor, can you pray for us as we close? Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, we appreciate you. Amen. Thank you for your word that has come expressly to us this evening. Thank you for the understanding that you have given us. Pastor, what says to Lord that your word will illuminate the heart of the simple. Father, we thank you because as we have heard your word and as we are closing down this, this broadcast this evening, the grace to walk in the light of your word. Father, we receive it and we receive for every viewers in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, wonderful Son of God. Thank you. We worship and we adore you. Hallelujah. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Till we meet tomorrow, God bless God you. God bless you.